Take your Bible and turn with me, if you would, please, to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, again, but verse 9. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verse number 9. <clears throat> Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, and verse number 9. <clears throat> please understand that while Jesus was ministering in his time, when he was born, he died on the cross, when he was resurrected, his time here on earth, Israel was under the dominion in the natural world of Rome, the Roman Empire. The old saying goes, and it's not just an old saying, all roads lead to Rome. That's actually a reality in history at one point in time. There have been several empires in our day and time. And so uh, we were talking last night about the system. It's a spirit. It's not just actions, but it's a system of spirit. It's an anti-spirit. And it's always been here. You're probably not going to change much of it. Okay? Because it's, it's a spirit. And the secret to success is understanding that God's spirit is out here. He has a kingdom that we can spiritually get in. And like Joseph was in Egypt, the Egyptian spirit. Uh, God blessed him there in spite. You, follow, you understand what I'm saying? In spite. Daniel was in Babylon as a prisoner, but God raised him up and brought him into favor. And in spite of the system he was encased in naturally, God's kingdom spirit he was also in, and he functioned with great favor with, with uh, the kings of Babylon just like Joseph did with the kings and pharaohs of Egypt. And so God can, say this with me, God can bless me, God bless me. Right, here, right here, right now, right now. Because, I'm because I'm in his kingdom. His kingdom. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so, uh, and that's where you have to get yourself to because how many knows that the spirit or the drama or the issues or whatever you want to call them, the uh, political correctness of this world will drain you till there's nothing left of you. How many knows that, okay? And so not to mention if you throw some religious drama in there with it and some false religion teaching and the judgmental attitude that people have towards you about everything you do, it seems they can do everything right, but you do everything wrong. Anybody know what I'm talking about, all right? So, you'll never be good enough to please them. <clears throat> and so you got to get past, you got to get out of the box, you got to get out of all that. <clears throat> and you got to walk in God's kingdom. So I want to speak, I want to read the, what we call the Lord's Prayer. It's actually Jesus teaching us to pray. And so, uh, I want to title my sermon today, Every Minute of Every Day. Every Minute of Every Day. Uh, you want to create cycles in your life. You want to create, you know how, uh, like at uh, the wedding afterwards, uh, last night had some music playing, and it was like six or eight songs. And so what they did, because Alex liked those songs, they put it on loop, just looped it. What's that mean? Just play them over and over. How many of you, sometimes you hear a song, oh, I like that, and you just listen to it over and over and over? I do. I do. You always have, all right? So, and so does RB, all right? Anyway, and so uh, if I'm in my truck, so I put mine on shuffle. I have 635 songs on my phone, and I put it on shuffle. One comes on I don't like, I just punch a button, just go to the next one. Well, why did you buy it if you didn't like it? Well, uh, I like it, but I just didn't want to hear it at that moment. You, you, I got to feel my music. You understand what I'm saying? You feel me? All right. And so that being, because it creates an atmosphere. Okay? If you come in today, this music they just sang and lifted up Jesus created an atmosphere. Now, if we'd had, uh, we love you, we're praying for you, Ozzy, but if we had Ozzy Osbourne in Black Sabbath back in the day doing Paranoid, that would have created a whole different atmosphere. You understand what I'm saying? You feel me? Or maybe Steppenwolf, Born to be Wild, you know? Maybe John Lennon, Imagine. Well, we don't live in an imagined world. We love John Lennon, God bless him, but, you know, you feel me? <clears throat> You understand what I'm saying? We could even did uh, the stone simply for the devil. You know, that would not have created a good atmosphere for church. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. And so when a song pops up and I feel it in my spirit, Lynn, I just bump repeat. 
So how many times you listen to it? I don't know. Sometimes two, sometimes 20. Sometimes I just let it go all day long. Why? Because it's, it's creating a cycle of attitude in me. Now, if you want God to join you, create an environment conducive of his presence. All right? And you can feel that. So let's see how Jesus told us to pray. So how's all this got to do with praying? Well, all this starts off with talking to God. And you'd be surprised at how practical the Lord's Prayer is. It covers every area of our life. That's why I'm titling my sermon every minute of every day. After this manner, in other words, do it like this. Therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In other words, address who you're going to take talk to. Do you just walk up to folks and don't even speak to them and just start talking to them? Well, yeah, some folk do, but, you know, usually I say hello. Even when I meet strangers, you know, I just, I, I will speak to them. How you doing? You know what I'm saying? And so that's what that is. <clears throat> just say, Lord, it gets his attention. Why? Because you got the blood of Jesus on you. You got the Holy Spirit living in you. You don't have to go do cartwheels. Cat, you, know, you don't have to do no push-ups or something. You ain't got to go comb your hair. You don't have to go shave your head, tattoo a cross in the middle of it, nothing like that so we can see it from the space station. No, you just say, Lord, that's what that verse is about. Address, Miss Arlene, who you're going to talk to. When I see Miss Arlene, I call her by name. I say, how are you, Miss Arlene? You, that way she knows I'm talking to her. Well, she knew it ahead of time, yeah, but it's just called protocol, all right? Spiritual protocol, all right? Are y'all with me? The very next thing Jesus said, thy kingdom come, talking about the spiritual domain of God, thy will be done. Now, so he wasn't talking about, now Jesus was talking about a couple of things at one time. He can multitask. He was talking about a thousand year real physical kingdom that's going to happen on this earth and it's going to start the day the tribulation is over. And so uh, if, that, if we get called out to be with the Lord this afternoon in the rapture of the church or the catching away of the church, then this kingdom, the literal kingdom will start 1,000, excuse me, seven years after that day during the tribulation period when the battle of Armageddon is over, then the, the, the actual thousand year reign and kingdom of God will be on earth physically speaking. But he's praying for us now. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thy will, God's will, what God wants done in earth. And then he says, as it is in heaven. Let me ask you some questions. Are there any, do you like this verse? Does it sound good to you? Do you like it? It sounds good to you? Feels good to, feels good to you? All right. Especially the part about in earth as it is in heaven. Are there any sick people in heaven? Are there any tears in heaven? Are there uh, uh, any poverty in heaven? No. Do you struggle to pay your light bill in heaven? No. Are you broken hearted in heaven? No. I can go on all day. I can do this all day. Okay? Let's read the verse again. Thy kingdom come, Lord, bring it on. <clears throat> Breaking it down to 2018. God, just bring it on. All right? I, something ain't happening real good right here. I don't feel like I'm, you know, the kingdom ain't really working for me too good today. The one I'm seeing is working against me. So I need you to kind of set me in your box and protect me from the crazies because they done let the cows out and they ain't going to close the gate. It's over. You understand what I'm saying? Anybody had that week this week? I know me and Martha did. Anybody else? All right? All y'all had a stress-free week? Okay. All right. Good. <laughs> Some of you perked up then. That's, that's a good. It's good. I don't want to get Jessica started. All right. Anyway, that being said, all right, notice it says, as it is in heaven. So let's just try believing this verse. Amen. You can just stop right there and say, Lord, I want, you know, God made streets out of gold, so he's not broke. He's not broke. Well, why do we take up an offering? Because we're broke. <clears throat> Some of you will get that after a while. <clears throat> I'm investing in this right here. In Luke 6, 38, we'll get to it. Jesus said, give. And it shall be, not it might be, but he said, give, and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken up, uh, good measure, pressed down. Oh, my Lord, help me, Jesus. Yeah, good measure, pressed down. And running over. Help me, Lord. And with what measure you meet, it shall be meet unto you. I just got out of, well, actually what happened when I was quoting that verse, is my mind got distracted to being my first cousin, Jim Estes. And uh, that kind of threw me into a trauma right there of its own. My aunt used to send us to the bottom 
She said, y'all go pick me a wash tub. And I ain't talking about one of them little bitty foot. I'm talking about you know, number three. Is that what it's called, number three? So y'all go pick me a wash tub or number three tub full of peas. Anybody here size me ever picked a number, one of them full of peas? There's a few of you, okay? Yeah. She wanted it rolled over the top. Me and Jim didn't like to pick peas. I still don't like to pick peas. I'm 6'4". I don't like to pick peas. I was born 6'4", evidently, okay? And they're a long way to the ground. So we would pick a half a tub full of peas. Okay? <laughs> pick a half a tub full of peas. And the way peas are, you can kind of fluff them up. You follow what I'm saying? And so it make them look like a full tub. I know none of y'all would do nothing like that. I was born thinking that way, okay? I just have to fight it every day. All right, so... We get on the trailer. I'm on the trailer holding the tub. Jim always drove the tractor. Whatever Jim Messers drives, he drives as fast as it goes. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, and the trailer had no shock, you know, just a straight axle. It was just like every time, we'd, every time it would touch the ground, if that did happen, then peas also would shake down. Jim would look back and say, keep them fluffed up. Mama's going to be mad. So I'm holding on to the trailer, okay? I'm trying to keep the peas. Peas fluffed up so we don't have to go back. I mean, how many 10-year-olds likes to pick peas? Okay, you understand what I'm saying? So that hit me right in the middle of that verse. But give, and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. All right? I got that trauma vision out of me now and, and quote it. So if you create that cycle of giving, give, and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over in your life, as you meet, men shall give to you. You understand what I'm saying? So that's a cycle. If you create it, you just, you know, like when you go to the restaurant and you tip and you look at that waiter, waitress, servant, person, whatever they call themselves now, and you can tell that if they're not doing it for their health, if you got some extra money, give them an extra tip. <clears throat> All right? And so it, it, will, it will create a cycle. <clears throat> so I always get awful food. Well, invest a little bit in the person that's serving you that food and maybe it'll switch around. You understand what I'm saying? You say, well, that may not help them. Do you really think they're waiting tables on Sunday afternoon because they like to? <laughs> if you do, then go get you a job. You'll be back next Sunday. Brother Scotty, I'm better off in church, all right? So, uh, and it can change their life. It can do something for them. They can, God, so what happens then? Well, God can, God can do something with that, okay? In your life as well as in their life. I'm talking about creating disciples. God, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on, in earth as it is in heaven. Jesus died for all of us and created a cycle, thank God, that cannot be broken. Then the next verse is give us this day our daily bread. God cares about us every day. He counts the hairs on our head. He counts the birds that fall. He, he cares about us every single day and part of our life. He cares that we mingle, that we love one another. He cares that we worship vertically. He cares, so he cares about what you have to eat today. Is that not in the Bible? Is that, did I, am I reading, do I need to get my glasses out? Give us this day our daily bread. This day, daily bread. Bread is a, uh, what do you call it? A staple, is that what you call it? All right, in, in Israel, in, in that economy, you had bread and sometimes bread. You, you understand what I'm saying? All right? Back even in the cowboy days. I mean, what can you haul? You can haul jerky and some bread. It's stale bread. Okay? Well, if you get hungry enough, you'll, you, you'll get it down. You'll be all right. About the fourth day, it start tasting pretty good. Can I get an amen? All right? <clears throat> or there's jungles you can go to. They don't even have no bread. Or you just eat stuff. You don't even know what it is. All right? But after about the third day, once again, it'll start tasting pretty good. So God cares because I, I have people a lot talk to me about, I just don't want to ask God for nothing. Well, I know you think that makes you sound spiritual. It also makes you sound like you've never read the Bible. Okay? I'm getting nicer. Instead of saying they're stupid, I'm saying you've never read the Bible. All right? So anyway, <laughs> I'm learning that I don't have to say everything I think. All right? So because is this in the Bible? Give us this day our daily bread. Is that, am I reading it out of the Bible? So God cares about you. So don't wake up in the morning. I know I preached on Thanksgiving the last Sunday I was here, two, two weeks ago. Uh, yes, you can do, believe it or not, you can do both. Wax on, wax off, you can do both. Y'all got me? 
You can thank you, God, for this day and just not even take a breath and say, thank you, God, that you're going to provide my daily bread and bread's a staple. That means I got plenty of bread, God. You can skip that. I need some of this other stuff, all right? I need you to bless me all about, y'all feel me? Start a cycle. Start a cycle. Say, Lord, I can't remember that. Well, write it down. You know the, the power of the pen? You understand know what I'm saying? My granddaddy told my daddy, my grandfather, Boatner, I never got to meet him. <clears throat> he died the year before I was born. He carried one of them little short pencils. How do you remember them little short pencils? Anybody remember them? He carried his own pencil. And my daddy, as a kid, asked, said, Daddy, why do you always carry your own pencil? He said, Son, if you ain't got your pencil, they'll do the figuring for you. He said, I like to do my own figuring. <clears throat> I mean, because the man, his pencil is different from your, you feel me? Especially if he owes you some money, he might do some subtracting instead of adding. Y'all better get your own pencil, all right? <clears throat> Until I got a telephone with a cal uh, uh, calculator, is this what it's called, calculator? I kept a little calculator in my pocket so I could, Eric could do my own figuring. I'd suggest you do your own figuring, all right? You and God will come up with something better, all right? Give us this day. And now verse 12, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. The word sins and the words transgressions are used in other parts of the Gospels in this same prayer. And so, Lord, forgive me of my sin as I forgive those that have sinned against me. You see the as I part? This is a practical thing, all right? This is not necessarily something to do with your salvation and forgiveness. This is a daily thing, all right? Let me teach you something about forgiveness. The best thing for you to do if somebody hurts you you need to distinguish between have they hurt my feelings or have they hurt me? Big difference, and we constantly keep them mixed up. I've talked to people, well, they hurt me. I said, tell me what they've done, what, what they did to you. And I said, no, they didn't hurt you. They hurt your feelings. Big difference. Number two, do it as quickly as possible. Because if you don't, now the memory, that's a whole other subject. Just because you forgive someone doesn't mean you're going to forget it. You can probably remember it till the day you die. So don't get your memory mixed up with unforgiveness. You understand what I'm saying? Just because you can remember that someone hurt you, Scotty, doesn't mean you haven't forgiven them. So don't get the two mixed up. It's like it's walking a tight wire. I realize you'll probably remember, you know, uh, I can remember all kind of, I can write a book on the stuff that I remember that people have done to me, but I Learned a long time ago, I was going to forgive them instantly to walk with God and have His Spirit in my life. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? And so Jesus said, forgive your debts. And the word debt there is actually a financial word. It's the word, I think, confident. I hadn't looked it up in the Greek but, uh, lately, but it actually has to do with finances, all right? So God, forgive me for all this stuff I put on my credit card, all right? Can I get an amen? Talk to me, okay? Are right, y'all with me? All right. Verse 13. Lead me not into temptation. In other words, Lord, help me, Jesus. This path I'm on riding kind of rough, and I know you said that you had a smooth path for me, so I done took me a left some kind of which way another, and I need to get on me another road. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody ever rode on a road called Yandale Road down toward, uh, okay, it's a good thing. You buy your new car when you got to the end of it, okay, all right. I personally think that's what's wrong with my back. If you have never ridden, they have gone and put some new asphalt down. So the bumps are even higher now, all right? So, <clears throat> y'all with me? I mean, I go around. I'll drive 20 miles around. I drove my motor home down at one time, then I had to sell the motor home. True story. It's, I mean, it'll break you. And so, uh, Lord, lead us out into temptation. The word temptation is a big word. God, protect me from the trials, the tribulations, and the temptations to do things I don't need to do. Uh, you know, my neighbor's done killed my dog. I'm finna go over and burn her house down. You need to try to avoid those kind of things. You understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> Those kind of things are, are, are real. It's my dog. If I wanted him dead, I'd have killed him. Okay, it ain't your dog. Leave my stuff alone. You, you feel me? All right. I don't even like cats, but I don't want the neighbor's dog coming over there eating them. Because well, if, I, if I want them eight, I'll eat them myself. Okay. So anyway, <clears throat> I never really eat a cat. I don't think, but anyway, <clears throat> never know with us. Okay. <clears throat> Lead us in uh, what's that animal rights group? Peter, if you're watching, we love you and we love our animals and we feed them every day, all right? And lead us not into temptation, but, see that word but? 
You remember our verse for the year? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Notice it says here, God, Lord Jesus, put me on a better path, but deliver me. Lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. Just pick me up above it like you did Daniel in the lion's den. Go read about Daniel in the lion's They had a good night's rest. Poor king that got tricked into throwing him in there. He stayed up and walked the floors all night. Dear God, dear God, I don't know what we're going to do. That lion's is eating Daniel, and I'm not even going to know what to do without Daniel. Went down there, and the Bible says that the angels came from God and closed the lion's mouths that they did him no harm. So you can live smack dab, Mark Brillo, right up in the middle of a lion's den and be better off than the king up there with the best bed money can buy. Because the best bed money can buy won't necessarily mean you get a good night's rest. Can I get an amen? Amen. All right. <clears throat> so, pray. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom. There's that word kingdom again. All right. We're not going to get to it today, but we'll get to it later. Jesus went about many verses preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And so we need to get kingdom minded. All for, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So I'd suggest you take this little short prayer. And just read it and read it and read it till it becomes aware to you that God cares about every minute of every day of my life and he is going to bless me because I am his child. I am his, in his kingdom and he is going to take care of me. I just need to talk. I need to converse with him. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on, in earth as it is in heaven. All right, give us this day our daily bread. Whatever I need today, God, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive me of my sins and my debts and my transgressions as I forgive those that have sinned against me, those that have hurt me, those that have lied on me, those that have just, I mean, just, just bizarre things about, Lord, just, just let me, I got to let that go, okay? Because if you don't, they're going to go on, and obviously if they hurt you, they don't care. You know, for the, that's, there's exceptions to that rule, but you, you, you're stuck there. And so, Lord, I don't want to be stuck nowhere but in your will. All right? Lead us not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. Thine is the glory forever. And so create a cycle. That's what we're doing this year. We're creating a cycle, a mindset. You've got to think differently. Think there. I don't forget who I was talking to. I talked to a lot of people. Let me tell you this. You know that whole... I've been thinking about that whole uh, glass half empty thing. People uh, say, you, are you a glass half empty person or a glass half full person, Mickey? Uh, I just thought about something Mickey told me, some good advice, actually. Uh, he told me, he said, Brother Scotty, if you'll try to look stupid and act crazy, won't nobody ask you to do nothing, okay? And so, anyway, <laughs> so... Love, Brother Mickey. <clears throat> back to the whole, Mickey, Brother Mickey, back to the whole glass half empty, half full thing, you know, which kind of person are you? Well, the, I, I figured out, I've been trying to figure out what kind of person I am. But if you go with it, with that mindset, well, that just depends on what day it is. You understand what I'm saying? Depends on what day it is, baby. Number two, depends on what's in the glass. There's some stuff in some glasses I've been around, I wasn't going to drink. <clears throat> When I got off an airplane in India, they gave me a glass of milk tea. You ever had any milk tea? <laughs> Call Daniel Sharp and ask him about milk tea. That's all I'm going to say. He said, I'm going to try everything they got. I said, hey, baby, I can fast. If I can get some water, I can make it for nine days. <clears throat> <laughs> so, and them glasses wasn't half. Uh, Tanya, they wasn't half. They was full up, you know what I'm saying, and steaming. Milk tea with smoke coming off of it. Feel me? Y'all with me now? You see all this stuff they tell us is crazy. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? It don't even have to make sense if you get to really, what kind of person are you, half full or half empty? Well, that just, bless God, depends on what's in the glass. But what I done figured out, I had a revelation one day this week. Mike had come to me. If I got a glass, hey, I'm just glad I got a glass and something in it. Amen? Can I, can I get an amen? Some folk obviously ain't even got a glass. 
Y'all with me? And some folk got full glasses and don't even know it. What do you mean by that? I know millionaires that are broker than the brokest person in this building. So what do you mean? Up here. You understand what I'm saying? Because they go to the steakhouse and they order them throwaway chicken nuggets. Don't even have a bone in them. So you don't know if they come off a of chicken or not. You understand what I'm saying? They can afford to buy the steakhouse. Are y'all with me? It's mindset. <clears throat> mindset. Got to recrank it. So how many glad you got a glass and let God put something in it? Can I get an amen? amen. Quit worry about all that half empty and all that stuff. It don't matter what it is. God can put a glass and God can put one drop of something in your glass. Just one drop. And it'd be more than another fellow with 12 glasses slap dab full. Can I get a witness? Amen. God can do more for you in 30 seconds than you can do for yourself in 30 years. Can I get an amen? amen. So all these things that we're programmed with, just, just say, Lord, I need to be programmed. Let my mind have the mind of Christ. So with every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, I know that you care about every minute of every day of our life. And Lord, I thank you for your goodness.